Hey guys, it's MA Fish Guy. This is part three of the top three ways to breed betas. Um, the first method I went over was the hobbyist way. Uh, the second method was kind of the breed them and forget about them, um, the tie method. Uh, and this third one is going to be the basically poor man's way how to breed betas. Uh, this is quite, quite basic, but it's actually what you use to breed them that makes this considered the poor man's way of breeding them. The breeding is all the same. Uh, like I said, it doesn't change at all. They're still going to do the bubble nest, everything like that. Um, but the difference with this is you're going to go to Walmart, Lowe's, Home Depot, Target, pretty much anywhere you can find uh, totes. What you're going to use is like a shoebox tote is what I think they call them. I think they're running anywhere from $3.99 to $5.99. Uh, you can buy 10 or 20 of these at a time. You can buy them off bulk on even eBay, Amazon. Uh, and you can actually set up a shelving unit that's only going to cost you 30 bucks, if that. Uh, and you can set up 20 breeds within like a 4 by 2 area. Um, what makes this handy is you can breed so many different pairs of betas in such a little area. Whereas normally you'd have a one or two or three 10 gallon tanks in one area taking up this much space. You now have Tupperware totes. Um, with this method, I prefer to um, combine it with a tie method of putting them in a large pool. Uh, and with this method, the only downfall to it is you have to actually heat the room. Uh, you're not going to be able to heat the containers that uh, have the fish in them because they are plastic and they do melt. So you want to heat the room up to about 80, which is going to keep your water around 74 to 76. You're still going to put the cups in, you're still going to put the plant in, um, but you're only going to fill it up about 4 inches, which makes it a whole lot easier to just use any kind of glass container to hold the female in there uh, while the male builds a nest and then release her. Um, with this method, you can easily transfer them to the bigger grow out tank when the babies hatch, um, or even do water changes. It's so much easier. Basically, you net them out, kind of take some water out of that shallow pool where you use the grow out tank, and boom, you have a water change in no time with aged water. Um, that's the best way to do it. Or even keep a 55 gallon drum covered with just aged water and just dump them out into a net, scoop up some water, and press out. You can just fill it up again and let it sit for a couple of days, and you have aged water perfectly for water changes. Um, but like I said, with this method, use shoebox totes, a metal, you definitely want to use a metal uh, shelving rack, and heat the room up. Um, and this is actually just an easier way to do it if you want to breed them on a, a wide scale area uh, and you just don't have the money for it. And yes, the heating is going to cost a little bit, but if you pick a small enough room, almost like a walk-in closet, um, you can do this real easily and cheap with even with a... Uh, you know, electric heater or a gas heater, it doesn't matter. Um, but like I said, you just, that's the only downfall to this method. But it is a lot cheaper than using a 10 gallon tank unless you can go to Petco for their dollar a gallon deals and get, you know, 10 10 gallon tanks for a hundred bucks. Um, but also you're gonna take up more room, they're gonna break easier. And with the totes, I just find they work a lot easier and easier to clean. Um, but the feeding's all the same. You know, the babies are going to hatch within, you know, two days, a day, depending on how hot you have the water. Uh, they become free swimming in another two to three days, uh, and that's when you can move them to the grill out tank and uh, feed them, you know, in mass amounts there. Because you can raise a couple hundred betas in a 55-gallon, you know, a drum or even like a cow trough. You can buy a tractor supply, um, and this is probably the easiest way to do a, you know, a large-scale breeding. Um, if you don't have any kind of area outside that's warm enough to do them, um, you know, if you live up here in the you know, East Coast where, you know, we have harsh winters six months out of the year, you definitely can't do it. And I mean, if you live over in, you know, the China or anything like that, it's great because you guys have a warmer climate in some areas, so you can do it that way. Um, but yeah, check out my part one video, the hobbyist way, my part two video, the Thai way. Um, you can even combine them all, uh, you know, take certain aspects of each one and combine them. Um, subscribe to me, check out some of my other videos, um, go to my website, mafishguy.blogspot.com, where I'll have uh, product updates, um, the actual breeding and writing, um, so you can just kind of go over it with there, and there'll be different pictures there. Um, I will be doing a top five video for fish to breed in the community tank. Um, that was a viewer request. Unfortunately, I haven't been able to do it yet um, because of the snowstorm we just got. Um, but yeah, check it out. Go to my channel. I have a bunch of other videos on how to breed fish. Uh, if you have any comments, concerns, um, requests, throw them down in the comments. Write them on my channel. Send me an email. I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Thanks.